Hello, in this lecture we will be working a problem concentrating on accounts receivable and allowance for doubtful accounts and be working on the allowance method for writing off accounts receivable. So we're going to have the activity over here. These will be the transactions that we're going to record. We're going to record them in the blue area here in the general journal. And then we also have the trial balance over here and we're going to see the effect on the trial balance. Note the format of the trial balance as we will have the assets, of course, will be in green. Then we have the uh, liability accounts, the equity accounts, and then the income statement, revenue and expenses. We have a very limited amount of accounts, accounts so that we can just concentrate basically on the writing off of the accounts receivable, but also be able to see the effect on a trial balance in context. We also have the assets here in the accounting equation equaling the liabilities and the equity of course and we can see that we are in balance down here by saying that the debits of the assets and minus the liabilities adds up to zero therefore the debits equal the credits so note that there's only one uh, column here but we're saying the debits minus the credits equal zero that green zero means we're in balance net income as of now is just that 378,000 then we have the general ledger over here we will post our activity to the general ledger which of course is in the same order as the trial balance assets in green and then the liability in orange and then the equity in the light blue and then the income statement in the darker blue then we're getting we have this information down here which will be the accounts receivable subsidiary ledger so this is going to be similar to the general ledger up here, but by contrast, instead of recording this information just by date as it will be done in the general ledger, we're going to record it by customer down here. So we're going to need to know that in order to be able to uh, account for customers that cannot pay. And so these are going to be the customers in names. And if we add up all the accounts by customer, then it should sum up here to this one million two and that ties out to the receivables here and that ties out to the receivables here at the end of this problem we're also going to take a look at an aging account and this will come into play later on so we'll take a look at that towards the end all right so let's take a look at our first transaction which is going to be on 217 which says determine that cw company would not pay the amount owed so we're saying that one of our clients, one of our customers, is not going to be able to pay us. We've determined that their account will be uncollectible. So under the allowance method, then, how are we going to record that? How are we going to adjust for that? Now, note that we can see this down here in our ledger. If we go down to our subsidiary ledger, uh, here CW owes us this 9000 That's the individual that is not going to pay us, or the company in this case. So we're going to have to write that off. So the question is, is cash affected? In this case, no, we're not going to get cash. That's, that's the problem. And so the account that is affected is the receivable. We're saying that receivable there includes 9000 from CW and it will not be paid. So that needs to go down. We need to go down even though we haven't gotten payment for it because we don't believe we're ever going to get pay payment for it at this time. So we need to take it off the books. So that has a debit balance. We're going to do the opposite thing to it then, which in this case would be a credit. So I'm going to copy the receivable, right-clicking and copying in L6, put our cursor in C6, and this we're going to paste it here. I'm going to right-click, paste it, one, two, three, just the values, not the format of the cell, values only. Then we'll go in into the credit column. We are going to be recognizing credits in this worksheet with a negative. So I'm going to type in negative 9,000. And when we select enter, it's going to put brackets around it because of the formatting of the Excel worksheet like so and it also includes of course the comma here to put it in a number format and then we're going to also have a debit for the same amount for 9000 because we need an equal number of debits and credits and the only question then is what account should we debit and normally of course we would get cash in this situation and we would be debiting cash but we didn't get any cash <laughs> so under the direct uh write-off under the allowance method we are going to debit the allowance for doubtful accounts. So notice what we will not be doing is expensing it at this time. And under the direct write-off method, we would be expensing it as bad debt expense at the time it was written off. Now, why are we doing this? The idea being that we want to try to match the expense with the revenue. 
And so that means that in the period that we generated the revenue, we would like to write off the amount of those revenues that we think are uncollectible in the same time period. And in order to do that, we're going to have to do an estimate, which we'll do at the end of this problem. And we'll estimate the bad debt for the time period all at one point in time. But um, when we write off the, the debt, when it becomes uncollectible, that's probably going to happen at a later date. And so you'll note that if we wrote off the expense now, then it wouldn't be matching up with the revenue that helped to generate it. So we're going to use an estimate to try to match that up under the allowance method. So what we have here under the allowance account then is this 40000 That represents the amount that we believe will be uncollectible. So if we think about the receivables then, we now have a contra account related to the receivables. So the receivables one million two of the one million two, we think that 40000 have been estimated to be uncollectible. Now we're going to put that in a second account for a similar reason as accumulated depreciation is a contra asset account. It's a contra asset account, meaning it's an asset account with a credit balance. You can see that with the brackets. So normal asset accounts have a debit balance. This is an asset account, but it has a credit balance. Why does it have a credit balance? Because basically it's kind of like the second half of the receivable account. This is the receivable account. It's an asset. And part of that, we kind of broke it in half again, the T into, you know, like a seven and an R again. And this is kind of like the, the credit half of the T account that we think are gonna be uncollectible. Now we're gonna put it in a different account for a couple reasons. One, um, we don't know who is not going to pay us. We just made an estimate based on past experience that of the 1 million to 40,000 will be uncollectible. That's just an estimate that we've made based on past experience and we can't write it off to a particular person, a particular customer. For example, if I scroll over here down to the accounts receivable, these are the people that owe us. We don't know which one's not gonna pay us, but we do know from past experience that someone's not gonna pay us. And therefore, we're gonna estimate that and uh, put that into the allowance account. We're also telling our readers, hey, it's just an estimate. People owe us 1 million too, but we wanna be straight up front that based on past experience, 40,000 not gonna be paid, therefore, the 1 million two minus the 40 is 1 million 160. That's the net receivables at this point in time. Now, when someone does not pay us, then we're gonna say, hey, we already estimated that. We already said, made this account saying that these people aren't gonna pay us. Of that 40,000, nine of it is now has now come to pass. Now we know who's not gonna pay us and we can take it out of the allowance, meaning we're gonna reduce the allowance and reduce the receivable. So basically the allowance has the 40 in it and we are going to debit it, making it go down. So I'm going to copy that account. I'm going to put that on top in C5, right click and paste one, two, three. And obviously it might be easier to think about the allowance by first doing the receivable. And then we know that we're going to have to do the opposite to the other account. Notice there will be no net effect on the net receivables, meaning this minus this will be the same because the receivable is going to go down and the allowance, the contra account, is going to go down by the same amount, 9000 making uh, the, the balance the same. So let's post this out and see what happens. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller down here in the taskbar. Let's bring it down to like 80 is probably good. I'm going to scroll over here so we can see more information. And let's post this out. So we're going to go to the allowance. Now it's in the same order. Here's the allowance, third account. Here's the allowance on the general ledger, third account. And we have the debit. So we're going to be on the debit side of the allowance. I'm in cell C9. I mean S9, we're in cell S9. We're gonna select equals and then point to this 9,000 over here. So what's gonna happen when we hit enter? Well, that's a, this is a credit, this is a debit. Those are opposites. The 40,000 is gonna go down by 9,000 to 31,000. That of course puts us out of balance here. We see the 31,000 here and we're out of balance here and here until we post the other side to accounts receivable. So here's accounts receivable, we're posting that. That's the second account on the trial balance. That's the second account on the general ledger. We're posting it to the general ledger. We're gonna be in the credit column. So we are in column in cell P16. So we're in cell P16 equals, then we're just gonna to point to that 9,000. What's gonna happen once we hit enter? Well, this is a debit, that's a credit. It's gonna make it go down. We're doing the opposite thing to it. The receivable goes down to 1,191. That's the same number here in M6. And note that we now have affected the receivable account. 
we're also going to have to see what happens by customer. So note what we think about when we think through the receivable. We often think of, you know, how much money do people owe us? Well, people owe us one million one ninety one, and we estimate that the thirty one will not be paid. Next question: Who owes us that money? The GL doesn't give us that information necessarily because it's in only in order by date. So we're gonna have to scroll down here to the subsidiary ledger, and we're gonna look for the individual that's not, that we think is not gonna pay us. Here's the individual or the company. So we're gonna put this same information that we have here in the GL down here, but in a bit more complex nature in that we're gonna have to do it by customer, not just by date. So in cell T31, we're gonna select equals and then point to that 9,000. We're gonna post that same information down here. So there we have it, and then it goes down to zero, so we no longer owe, or that individual no longer owes us, the company no longer owes us, because we have written it off. And if we add up all the companies that owe us, it ties out to 1,191, which is the same amount on the receivable, which is the same amount up here in the trial balance. All right, let's see what happens next. We have on 412, G Company paid a partial payment and went bankrupt. It is determined that we will not receive the balance. So G Company paid us the 20,000 and then uh, we're assuming we're not gonna get the balance, the difference of 10,000. So the questions we're gonna go through is cash affected. Yes, we got money, we've got 20,000. So cash is gonna go up, cash is a debit balance. We're gonna make it go up by doing the same thing to it, which in this case would be another debit. So I'm gonna right click, gonna copy the cash, gonna put that on top right next to the date because the debits traditionally go on top. Right click, paste it, one, two, three. The debit will be for cash received of 20,000. So there's our 20,000. I'm gonna make it a little bit larger on the taskbar down here. Let's make this a little bit larger. I'm gonna scroll back over so we can see that a bit more clearly. So there's the 20,000 we got in cash. Now, of course, we got paid cash, and who paid us the cash? The customer, and they owed us the cash. So we're not gonna credit revenue, of course, because we already credited revenue in the past. What we're gonna do is say, people owed us 20,000 represented by the receivable. That receivable now needs to go down by the fact that they paid us. So I'm gonna put that in there now. Now, there's gonna be more than two accounts affected, but this would be the normal transaction if someone paid us uh, the money for a receivable receivables have a debit balance it needs to go down because they no longer owe us money so i'm going to copy that and i'm going to put that underneath right click and paste it one two three and it's going to be a credit however it's not going to be a credit for twenty thousand because they owed us thirty thousand if we look at the amount of money that was owed us down here on the subsidiary ledger for g for g thirty thousand now, we're gonna say that they only paid us 20, but they're not gonna give us the difference. Therefore, we can't just write it down 20,000 because then we'll still show that they owe us 10. And if we never believe that we are going to receive that, we gotta just give that up. We're not gonna, we're not gonna get it because they went bankrupt. So, we're gonna have to take it off the books for the entire 30,000. So that means the credit then will be for 30,000. So I'm gonna put our cursor in uh, E9, negative 30. Thousand. So there's the credits. Now, of course, the debits do not equal the credits. We're going to need one more account. So the other account is going to be 10,000 because we need 20 plus 10 to get to the 30. I'm going to use our negative sum function. I call this the plug function in this type of worksheet to put this in there. So instead of selecting equals, I'm going to select negative SUM and then sum these up. So I'm summing it up, but I want it to flip the sign. So instead of it being a negative 10, which is what some function would be, this will be a positive 10. Therefore, the debits minus the credits will then equal zero in this case. So that's what we're going to put. We're going to need to put some other account there in order to put this in balance. Also note that this, um, I'm putting the debit on the bottom and I'm, it, under a perfect world, we'd have the two debits on top and I'm formatting it so that we have a debit and then a credit and then a debit, and that's not as perfectly proper, but if it is helping you to build the journal entry to think through it in a way that doesn't have all the debits on top, then I would prefer to do that if it's something that will help you think through it and if it's something that you go back to and you have a better audit trail, meaning I can look at the journal entry and see what happened, then I would break with the rule of having the debits on top and the credits on bottom. But just keep that in mind that um, traditionally we have the debits on top and the credits on the bottom. Uh, I'm just thinking through it in this way and I think that's worth doing 
So we are then going to see what account we need to put this into. We're not going to get the cash. Therefore, we're going to debit the...